Hi everyone, we have with us uh, the founder of True Beacon and co-founder of Zeroda. Uh, the first question, Nikhil, I would like to uh, ask you is, what do you think really made True Beacon and Zeroda successful? I would have to say uh, right time, right place. I think we started in uh, industries which were kind of ripe for a change when we mm -hmm. began. Yeah. And, you know, being in the right place at the right time and the right team, all of it together, I think has made these companies successful. In the world of startup, your startup uh, stands out because, uh, you know, you chose to bootstrap and then you uh, focused on being cash flow positive. So uh, in today's world, what advice do you want to give to the uh, new entrepreneurs who are you know, thinking of um, starting their own startups and uh, which factors do you think must be considered before going for you know bootstrap or you know ask, uh, going for funding you see it's it's not a factor of what people want to do it's more a factor of what the market is willing to give at that point mm -hmm. uh, considering where the world is today with the high inflation and rising interest rates uh, it will be harder for people to raise money or capital in the manner they might have five years ago or in the last decade in that cycle. So I presume more companies will have to focus on profitability. Uh, more companies will have to kind of like, uh, you know, uh, it can't be, you know, it takes five years to turn a profit or 10 years to turn a profit and raise money today. I don't think that will work in the future as it might have in the near past. Recently, we have seen from the data that uh, investors are growing more cautious towards investing in startups. And markets have also not taken the IPOs of several startups very positively, you know. So in this, how do you see, how do you see the future of fintech in India? Well, fintech, I think, has a, is a big opportunity. Nothing has changed there. Uh, penetration levels remain very low. Just about 2% of India has access to equity markets, for example. Uh, so the opportunity is immense. Uh, can I call the near term cycle of what will happen in the next six months or two years? Probably not. But from a 10, 20 year outlook, I think uh, it will, you know, the number of people using fintech products will definitely go up. In this, how do you see the role of Bharat, uh, the rural India? I think big, right? Like as our GDP per capita, let's say it's at 2 lakh rupees or close to 2 lakh rupees today. As that number goes up, a lot of this growth, I think, will happen from uh, rural India. I hope uh, it, it's a bit of a counter uh, argument to what we have seen play out in economies across the world. But I hope we do not go the China way and do not walk into urbanization in the manner that they did. I think history has taught us that that necessarily is not the best way to go about yeah. it. At some level, I presume the future of cities in a world uh, dominated by climate change issues will be more fragmented in nature and there will be a lot of uh, backward uh, immigration into rural economies and uh, you'll have many economies of scale versus these large metropolitan cities like we see today. And I think that pattern will probably uh, exaggerate the growth at which rural India will adopt fintech and uh, tech overall, I think. Nikhil, uh, we have seen that the inflation in, the, in India has been quite high. In September also, we saw inflation of 7.4%. How do you think in coming days it will impact the markets? Uh, will the have markets factored that in or, you know, we can see? What, what do you think? How do you think markets are performing in the near future? See, markets are strangely strong. Uh, I can't quite put my finger on why the world is correcting 25-35% and we are uh, pretty much where we were and you know we have not really corrected. Uh, inflation looks like it's, whenever you look back in time and you look at when inflation has peaked, it does not tend to be a, a, a one quarter or a three quarter problem, but it is a longer problem which lasts many years. So I think the same will happen again. I think inflation will be around for a while. Interest rates will be up. Uh, it, it makes a significant difference. If you were able to borrow a home loan at 8-9% versus doing it at 16-17%, uh, if interest rates remain elevated and continue on their current trajectory, uh, the EMI required, the appetite for buying homes, all of this goes down. 
uh, that in in turn will have significant impact on consumption in the country and in turn the stock market. So I think that will happen, notwithstanding the fact that stock markets are not reflecting that in terms of price activity today. Uh, recently, SEBI uh, introduced this mechanism called ASBA, uh, mm. where uh, the funds are just blocked in the uh, account of the applicant of an IPO. So what do you think? Will it have a positive impact on the upcoming IPOs or what will be the impact? I don't see how it can have a positive impact. I mean, if anything, the amount of leverage and the, the amount of money available for IPOs will go down a little bit. So I don't know if it'll have a positive impact. People are skeptical today uh, by virtue of the experiences hitherto where, uh, you know, what happened to the tech IPOs which came about. So they will be a lot more cautious when the next IPOs come in. Uh, I think the key here is IPOs should not become uh, this dumping ground for uh, FI for you know early investors, PEs, VCs, foreign investors, promoters to come dump onto retail. Uh, I feel like they have to leave significantly more value on the table for retail to come in and apply. If you look at most IPOs in the last year and year and a half, you know nothing is really going towards CAPEX. They're all offered for sale, OFS of one way or another. I think that trend has to has to stop, and more reasonable opportunities and valuations should be provided for the retail people to participate. We have seen investors investing more and more money in the markets in the past two years, especially in the COVID duration. Um, so, uh, where do you think from? Uh, where do you think the next wave of innovation in uh, investment will come from, retail investment. Uh, which sectors do you think are going to be at the forefront of it? I hope more innovative companies come and list on the exchanges. Uh, so for some reason, you know, we seem to have less of that. Uh, even on the tech side, we are more a services play than a play of innovation. I hope that changes. I think uh, tech around climate, not maybe in the next five years, but in the next 10, 20 years will become... Uh, a significant sector, uh, you know, specifically maybe things like geoengineering companies which attempt to modify or alleviate the the side effects of climate change. I think these guys have a big opportunity and, you know, everything ancillary to that, you know, it could be renewable energy, carbon negative companies, stuff like that. I think that'll be an opportunity. All right. Thank you, Nikhil. Thank you so much. If you like this video, share it and subscribe to Business Standard. For more news, views and insights, log on to www.business-standard.com. Do also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram and LinkedIn.